using the float and fly method for bass and casting long leaders on the back cast. I had a really good opportunity to be guided by Ryan Williams, who owns North Valley Fly Fishing. We were out on Lake Oroville fly fishing for bass using a float and fly method that he has developed his own take on. And he was talking about um, long these long leaders that he uses um, in his in his in, as part of his repertoire, and then a whole kind of the the way to think about those in casting. So here's the video of Ryan. Okay, so when you're casting the the float and fly leader, the shorter standard kind of nine foot leader that I use most often. That's really easy to cast. There's not much of an issue, not much of an issue with that at all. We're doing, for the shorter leaders, we're going the lighter fly, and uh, it's nice, nice and easy to cast. Cast very simple. This is not the case with these longer leaders at all. Uh, it's a lot trickier to cast these long leaders. There's a couple, couple little tips and, uh, and tricks I use for casting these things. Uh, very, very important, not big things, but all the little things add up. Um, because yeah, a lot of guys really struggle with these, these long, heavier leaders. It's very challenging for a lot of guys to cast. Guys that have been, been fishing for a long time uh, will struggle doing it. Very experienced anglers, they're just not used to that big old long deal. It's just a totally different different kind of cast. Yeah, long, long leader meaning uh, 12 feet to 15 feet, anywhere around there. Maybe even 11 feet would probably classify as a long, a long leader. Um, now the the trick with it, I gotta straighten this rod tip up. The trick with it is really just to let everything fold over. Not only just letting the bobber fold over, but the fly needs to fold over behind the bobber as well. And that's done by just doing a really slow, slow cast. Um, now when I have 12 feet or, or more from the bobber to the fly, I'm water loading 100% of the time. No shame in the water loading, it just works. If you don't water load, it's not gonna cast nearly, nearly as easy. So I'm just letting it tap, tap the water behind me and in front of me. And you'll notice I can let it, let it sit for a while. Uh, not too long, but you can let it sit for a little while. There's no rush on the cast here at all. If you give it plenty of time, it's nice and easy and effortless casting it. If you try to go, go too fast, it just doesn't, it really doesn't cast well at all. Um, so I can't stress that enough. Really, you just gotta, gotta water load these, these longer leaders. It might not feel right, but it's the, the way to do it with the heavier fly and whatnot. Now, the, the next, the big mistake that I see people making with these long leaders is they try to do what, what they're used to doing and that's kind of a little layup roll cast at first. Typically what we're doing to cast, a lot of times you strip in a little line, do a little roll cast and then back, fire back into it. You don't do that roll cast in here at all. There's no roll casting these long, long rigs. Totally forget about that roll cast. Oh, that was a bite. <laughs> so, what happens when people roll cast it, I'll give a, give a little example of it here. Once it's, it's sunk all the way down at least. So what happens when people roll cast it, they'll go like this, they'll strip it in, they'll come back, We'll try to roll cast and we'll go back and it's not, not going too smooth. Um, you're way better off just scratching that roll cast, strip it up and commit right off the bat to a back cast. Forget that roll cast. Commit to that strong back cast right off the bat. Now the next, the next thing uh, you need to think about when you're casting these long leaders is the initial back cast is pretty much the most important cast. That is gonna set the rest of your cast up uh, either good or, or bad. Um, it's like a, like a chain reaction. If you get a bad first back cast going, then the rest of your casts are just gonna 
it's going to be a snowball effect from there. It just kind of goes downhill. So you want to start yourself out with a really good back cast at first. First step is, like I said, to scratch the roll cast. Don't do that. Forget about the roll cast. Next, you want to really pull some line in to where that fly is starting to come up off the bottom. Once the fly starts coming up off the bottom, then you can lift the rod up and go for it. Now, uh, the lifting the, the rod up, what's in, uh, an important factor for that is you need to start with your rod tip down. You don't start your cast with your rod tip up like this. A lot of guys will do that. They'll start stripping it in and then they'll, they'll just have a small amount of space to move the rod up to cast. And it doesn't go that well when you're starting to cast from there. So you want to make sure that rod tip is down low to the water, strip it in nice and taut, get that fly kind of moving up off the bottom, and then lift up, and you're good to go. Some good information. There was a, a lot of differences between the, the float and fly method that he uses for fly fishing for bass on lakes and what you would traditionally think of as fly fishing for trout on a river or a creek or something. And it was really instructive because there was a lot of little, little small differences that can make a big difference when you're using that technique. Ryan Williams is the owner of North Valley Fly Fishing and he specializes in fly fishing for bass in Northern California uh, lakes and reservoirs and uh, you can apply those skills to your own local waters. He has his own take and unique innovative approach to the float and fly method. And uh, if you want to get in touch with Ryan and learn some of that stuff, let us know. We'll put you in contact. You can just call us, text us, or email us and we'll put you in touch with Ryan. And we'll see you right here next time on The Backcast.